ready. For really? Are we ready? I don't know. Are we ready? <laughs> sure. Is Angela ready? Angela's not ready. Hold on, guys. Last looks. Angela needs a little touch up. She's a little shiny. Okay. Anyway. So, you do primarily comedy. Correct. Yes. Okay. So, do you look at comedy experience when you're bringing people in? Or is that like who's It's helpful. Super Absolutely. Helpful? Yeah. yeah. What yeah. what do you recommend to actors? I th I think it's helpful if I can show producers that maybe if you haven't done that much TV, but you've done Groundlings or IO or, you know, like UCB or any of those to be like, oh no, they've done some work in this right. world, like they're ready to play. It's helpful. I don't think you need it. I think it's, it's just helpful. It's another, like in the way of saying like, right. and they studied at the school, so right. I can say, you know. If there's dramatic actors or actors that are mostly have done drama in their experience, but are wanting to get into comedy, would you see them if they're dramatic actors? I'd try like, it, yeah, sure. If they don't have any comedy experience still? For Man With The Plan, I probably wouldn't bring them if they didn't have any comedy experience. Just because it is a very tightly run show, and I think, I've seen it, where people who have gone on to set with Matt LeBlanc, and they just kind of get up in their head. We all grew up, well, not grew up, but watched yeah. them. You know, it's a, yeah. it's intimidating. So you need someone who, Knows how to bring do, the funny. Yeah. Um, do they ever do chemistry with him for bigger characters? No. So have, have people fallen apart on set with him? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Smaller roles and stuff, they're just, yeah, they have. Is it shot in the live audience? But you can see it happening. Right. Over the re That's why we go to the run throughs. We go to the yeah. run throughs to be like, do we need to replace yeah. this person? Is everything okay? Are yeah. we good? Okay, can you really quickly just talk about the how timetable the, the timetable for a week on a show on a so month. for us table read is on a monday and then that's it the actors are done for the day tuesday um they come in probably around nine or so and then we have a run through at around two then they're done for the day wednesday they come in around nine or so and we have a run through for studio and network at one at nine they're like they're rehearsing they're in they're they yeah, rehearsing, rehearsing. yes rehearsing and stuff. if they're going over new lines and figuring stuff out and blocking and all right, of that right, sort right. of where they're going to be for the stuff and you can see like blocking will change from the tuesday run through to the wednesday run through because they've just been feeling right. work for whatever reason yeah, yeah. and there are notes from the studio network after each run through well after the wednesday they only oh. need to go for the one the oh, wednesday right. oh the tuesday the, run through the, is... the tuesday's producers all the writers see it up on their feet and we're all in it, and then we're all laughing, hopefully, right. you know, like, finding, right. laughing honestly. Uh, <laughs> not, like, pushing right. it. Um, so they know where the laughs are, what's working, what isn't. Uh, and then Wednesday is just for studio and network, and the producers and all that, obviously. Uh, and then they rewrite, and then Thursday, for Man With The Plan, we do a lot of pre-shoots, because we have three kids on the show, so that helps the, with hours, they only have a limited amount of time. We'll often right. shoot out the kids, and then Friday is our tape night, and they come in around... Like two or three, and they start the show at five. And but we are usually done by eight or so, eight thirty. It's a very quick show that way because they shoot so much before. Right, and they'll just keep shooting each scene until they get it. Usually, it's no more than two oh, because okay. these guys are such profound. And and also, like Matt has been doing this a very long time, so he has a standard of what he expects from everybody. Right. And everybody down to the kids delivers. They're just they're all super crazy professionals. But then, so with the guest cast, for people that maybe haven't done it before, or people that do get nervous, mm -hmm. what happens? They just, do they just keep... Well, depending for the smaller roles, the co-stars, yeah. they may have them start on Tuesday and shoot through, it's so a three-day contract, and then they'll pre-shoot them out on Thursday, so then they have a little more control, so that they, they, they know that they can get it from them without worrying about the audience. If it's a bigger role, like we had Tim Bagley on the show, he's this great journeyman actor, he was there from table read to Friday night. And everyone's hired for a week? Then. No. No? Oh. No, that's what I'm saying. They, oh. some, we work three oh, right, days, right, right, right. Tuesday through Thursday, or Wednesday through Friday if we're going to shoot them the live that night. Sometimes we'll have them a week. For yeah. if, it's a co if it's like a complicated thing that's happening and there's an outdoor stuff in that. Right. But generally it's about three days. Okay, and then your process. So like, you get a script, break it down. Are you reading people the next day? Like after the breakdown? I pretty, they pretty much let me know in advance if either we have an outline or I've spoken to the producers and they've told me what they're looking for so that I've written a breakdown already and I've had them look at it, have it's approved by Studio and Network and I might have it out already before I have the sides so that I'm ready to hit the ground once. Once the, you get the yeah. Are you casting this week for next week's shoot? Yeah. Monday afternoon, I'm maybe setting up session, the pre-reads for Tuesday with the idea that the producer session will be Wednesday. They're booked Thursday, Thursday. and then they're off. And then yeah. they're off. Okay. That's the hope. 
And since it's a comedy, how do you feel about improv in the audition? I do not like it. They do not like it. I, I do not like it. Oh, you do not like it. Well, it was, Colin said it best. We were raised on Frasier where they knew if you said uh instead of the. You know, like they had, they knew their dialogue because they had thought about it so hard that if you went off script, they didn't like it. Got it. So that, that's just how I was trained. And, and I, Jeff's like that too with yeah. Modern Family. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I honor the words on the page. No, it's good to know because some, I mean, some yes. offices like the improv and some shows like the improv. I think, I think you should have it in your pocket in case someone asks for it, but say it was on the page initially and maybe you can do a button or, you know, yeah, something at the Yeah, I was going to say, what end. about a button? Yeah. That's okay. Because I can always say, let's do it again, but let's do it without the button, or I can edit out the button. But I get it sometimes if you're not ending the scene, it's not ending on your line that you want to throw something, but often you're not funnier than the writers, so right. that's hard. Multicam in particular has a rhythm that is almost, it's not Shakespeare, I'm not trying to make it, you know, right. I understand what I'm doing is not Shakespeare, but there is a meter and a timing to it that has to hit, you have to hit it the right way, so when you improv in the middle of it you're throwing off the rhythm and it's just so clear and also as I say if you improv in the middle of a scene how can I show apples to apples right when you just give me an orange right I need to show everybody doing this work and letting it shine so I um, mean multicams a lot I feel like a note you get is like more volume or energy or things like that mm -hmm. what does that really like what does that mean exactly I don't give I don't see that a lot unless it's something where it's like that character demands that you just be like really aggressive, you yeah. know? Um, I think there's... But it's like heightened versus like a single cam, right? Multicam's a right. little bit like, a little like bit that more. heightened reality like you were talking about right. with Nickelodeon. Right, a little bit more. But it should still, like I said, it should always be grounded in something real. Otherwise it just gets absurd and farcical and Matt is so simple and clean that you would just look like a, a crazy person next to him. I mean, he'll get silly. He's worn fat suits and done crazy right, things right, on the right. show. Like, but his day to day is like, you know, just really clean. Do they like to see you bring a lot of you, or is it like stick to what is? Kind oh of no, like? I like I I like to see you. I like to see your color on that. I I want that. Yeah. I want you, because that's what makes you unique. Yeah, 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 I yeah. want that. I want right. all the weirdos and all yeah. that. Like I like all like I want to see your uniqueness. I don't want to just see like generic like. Well, it's a multicam, so I must say it in this manner. Right. No, say it in your manner, and I'll tell right. you if it's going to work. Right. Or if it doesn't, I'll still like you and remember you for something else. Do you often do multiple takes with people? Not usually. No, unless I feel like they're way off course, and I know that that they can do it, that they're just making a, a choice that's odd. Yeah. You know. What if they ask you to do another take? I'll ask why. What because if, if it's like, if it's like, oh, can I do another take? Well, why? What do you think you didn't hit? Because if it's just like that panic of like, I, I need to do it again. And no, tell me what, like, I don't feel like I landed that joke the way I wanted to. And I, I know how it should sound. And if I agree with that, I'm like, oh, fair. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. But if it's just because right, the panic. Right, the panic thing, yeah. Then, do you send more than one take on? Or do you just send one? No, one? just one. But I'll have it in case. I'll have the pre-read or if they're, if they're unsure. I'll be like, oh, here, he did the pre-read for me. He was great. Here's his pre-read. I tape everything so that they're like, oh, okay, okay. Do you highlight people who are the producers? Like, I like these ones? It depends on the producers. For Man of the Planet, I just say, this is who I, these are who I like. When I was doing Big Time Rush, Scott liked it when I would say, who do you like? He would just say, who do you like? So I would put that person first, and I, or I would say, we have an abundance of riches. I love them all. I don't know, you choose. Yeah. I would say, these two I thought were really great. This is if you want something different. This is right, something Right, yeah, yeah. This is this flavor, this flavor, yeah. this flavor. You and Mark, how do you guys work together? I was going to say something flippant, like I'm the power behind the throne, uh, <laughs> which I say to his face. We generally divide and conquer. You know, Mark has been doing this for a very long time, so yeah. I really defer to him a lot. He's the master of answering every single pitch email with who he likes and who he doesn't like. And That's good. Yeah, That's he's amazing. Good. I, I often will say, look, I'm digging out. If we like them, you'll get a C mail because I just, you know, it's like when people then circle back. I'm sure you've had that. Where it's like, what do yeah. you think about this person? It's like, I'm stressing that I have thousands of people to review on breakdown. I, I don't have the time to answer your email. I need to look at that. Just because you email me again doesn't mean you get to the top of the pile. I, I got to deal with this and set up a session. Since you've worked for it, like the differences in the networks that you've worked for, like how they like things between like the Knicks versus the CBS. Versus oh, I mean, the... it's, it's so hard. I can't, it's not necessarily the network or the studio. It's also like the project demands something right. and yeah. 
something might be like, you know, Shannara was different from the pilot we're doing now, is different from Man with a Plan, is different from... There's so many different takes on things. Shannara was MTV, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I have to say most of the executives... Young, cool, yeah. Sexy. Yes. Um, I have to say most of the executives I've worked with have just been lovely and amazing and helpful. And it always feels like a team effort. It doesn't feel like they're judging you. I know a yeah. lot of people think like, oh, the execs, they have... All. It's like... No, no, sometimes they're, they're saying someone isn't right because they're considering them from another project and they're further down the line with the deal and that's why right. you can't go to them. And You know, yeah. it's all this stuff to help you do your right. job well. And the current pilot you're working on mm-hmm. is single cam, multi-cam? Single cam. Um, and what what's studio? It's CBS for CBS. Okay. Um, it's called Jury Duty. Jury Duty, right. Talk to me about the pilot process in general. It's mayhem. Yeah. It's complete and utter mayhem. I'm so in it. Like, I'm in the throes of it right now. Kevin and my husband looked at me like, oh, man. Like, I came yeah. home yesterday. I was like, Whew. Yeah. <sighs> just exhausted. So it's just, it's a marathon. Yeah. Like, it's just the sheer volume, volume of, everything. of everything. We were on the concept call for 20 minutes, and I got 75 emails in that time. Yeah. Do you imagine like that every 20 minutes? Phone ringing, people pitching. It's not so much phone these days, do you find? I don't feel like the phone rings as much. Not as, as much, yeah. Yeah. But Which it's I miss the those pitch. days. The pitching, the pitching. The pitching, the pitching. And then you're reviewing breakdowns, and you're checking emails, and, and you're... Things are changing. Yeah. And roles are changing. Or somebody's not available anymore. Like, oh, fuck. Well, right. Or now we want African-American. And blah, 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 blah. Right. 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 And what if she was a six-year-old Asian woman? Right. And you're like... Okay. What if uh, she was? Sure, sure. I mean, well, I have that list for you right here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my six-year-old Asian list. We actually do. <laughs> we did a pilot with Norman Lear called Guess Who Died, and it was all about people living in a 55 and over community. So, yeah, yeah. that list. Yeah, yeah. We got the pilot last Thursday. Started on Monday. You're seeing people already, I'm sure, yeah. No, no, there were there were a lot of offers that went okay. out because our producers are amazing and really know actors and knew what they wanted. So we're starting with offers, but there's also some smaller roles, not smaller, I should say. It's an ensemble, younger roles that demand that we read Read. people. So we're starting, and we didn't have an office until Friday, so we're starting on Monday to read people. And it's then like... Just reading and reading and reading reading and reading, while the offers for the big roles are being read. Or not the big roles, the older roles. The people that they want. They wrote with someone in mind, so they want to make the offer to that person. And Meanwhile, do you have lists of ideas oh, for yes. like many, backups many, many lists. for each And we of had those. a concept call on Wednesday with Studio and Network, and they talked about, they had the list in front of them, and they said, oh, I like this person, oh, that's interesting, this is our vision of the character, which is a little different than maybe this list. You know, like, you have them here, but we'd like to see more of this. Yeah. And in the concept calls, are they run mostly by the creator, or, like, is it the They'll studio? They'll start, well, someone, someone will start it, and, like, so, let's start with X role. Tell us about it. We created the list. We had spoken to the producers, who are just phenomenal. And we had a list of who they liked already at the top of them. So we were like, well, we spoke about this. And uh, we really love this person, this person, this person. This, this this would be our top five. From that, the studio and the network could, were able to say, like, oh, well, this really intrigues us. And we don't know that this guy, we've, I think we've done this. You know, like that sort of. So it helped us all have a vision together of what we were looking for. And then we just went through all of the roles like that. And so far... Like I'm so good. The ones that are you have offers right now, would you ever end up reading them or are they going to be? We are planning on reading them. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as a backup, you never know. I mean, you hope for the best, but you prepare for the worst. Right. So that offer may not happen and we are reading people for the roles because who knows? Because I know like at the beginning of pilot season, like everyone's trying to scramble for like the name to attach to their pilot. No, they're very realistic in who they want. They're very realistic. They're not, it's not like, you know, it'd be great. Brad Pitt. Who? Yeah. Do you know him? (laughs) <laughs> they're like that's the only way we're getting rep right. you know <laughs> they want the best person for the job it's not like who's the star that's going to get us this it's like right. who's the best person that's cool yeah that's good. which is nice any tips or advice for actors that you would give oh boy our, our, our viewers actors starting out getting a class I think getting a class I think the the even if you're just out of college getting a class whatever that class is I don't know UCB IO acting class so whatever scene study you need to it's a muscle that you need to be using and also I think for your own sake you need to be acting I have friends who are actors and when they're obsessing about their career it's usually when they're not in a class and when they're in a class they're like oh my god I did this scene and it's just immediately like it did and I was like right you're you're an actor right, right. you had a reminder that you're an actor and I think that's so important you know you go to the gym you do you should 
you should Work train those muscles. muscles. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the biggest thing. And have other interests in your life other than trying to become a TV star. star. Yeah. When am I gonna make it? <laughs> well, I always ask the question. You know, what's new and exciting? And when people are like, "Well, I'm on a veil for a commercial, and I just shot a," you know, and I'm like, "I know nothing about you." Right. But if you say like, "I." just got back from Paris and oh my god I had the best trip I ate my way through Paris where did you go tell me I want to go to Paris where oh right, do you right, like right. them oh fantastic I have a moment with you I know who you are I learned something about you and I'm intrigued by that and then yeah. as it comes out like oh yeah I'm, I, I cook and it's like oh I'm going to store that information because who knows I may need a chef someday who actually knows how to right. chop because it's the worst thing I hate watching shows when someone's supposed to be a chef and they don't know how to chop food I'm like <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? It's so clear when they cut away. It's like chop, 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 and then the person's like, "Really?" Uh, he's like slow chop. You know, yeah. you don't know how to chop. That's hilarious. So like that in my mind. Oh, hilarious. you'll see it now. You can't um, probably, see it. Yeah. Or like when people are making pasta or even cooking, they just have no skill. Like, yeah. They just don't look comfortable. So if you can do that, like then that helps me, and I remember that. And I'm, or some, you know, like if you're telling me about your trip to Paris, you're like, "Oh, well, I speak French," and so it's great to like get it back up and running. Oh, he speaks French. It's good tough. to know. You know, to know, you may not have that on your resume for whatever reason. Yeah. It's helpful. And now I know who you are. Yeah. And then when you come into me again, you're like, oh, have you been any other trips? Where'd you go this time? Oh, I got to find that rock. Good for you. Oh, great. You know, yeah. it's nice to hear those stories. How about like if actors want to keep in touch with you? Is like social media okay? Do, they, do you like I'm on you? Twitter. And I don't mind it. I'm more of a stalker on Twitter than anything. Who are you stalking? Like, Oh, everybody. I just like all the comedians yeah. and like all of that stuff. I just don't, I'm not pithy and I'm, yeah. I'm not, you know. I am on Instagram, but it's like private because I don't, I got creeped out. It became private when I was doing Big Time Rush and I posted something about my nieces who were like 14 at the time, 14 and 16 at the time. And someone found one of my nieces on Instagram and I was like, no, no, that's not okay. So I made it private. That's it, really. Yeah. Twitter. What about if they like run into you? I had a randomly, my best friend and I were out to lunch at uh, the Cheesecake Factory, because we're fancy, um, you know, because I love food. Um, <laughs> we were hungry with the, the Americana. Well, did you eat anything at the Cheesecake Oh, they have really good, like, lettuce cups. The white bean chili, delicious. She's on the Whole30. I don't know if we They're, mentioned that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't eat it. This was, oh. this was a while ago. But the waiter was like, I paid for the meal, and he was like, wait, you're Geraldine Flood, like, the casting director? And I was like, do you know my name? <laughs> like, what? How do you, he's like, oh yeah, I love your stuff, like you did. And I was like, hi. And he found me on Twitter and was like, hey, that's so cool that we met. And I was like, good on you, man, that's so great. Yeah. But I don't know what I would, I'm just like such an awkward human when that happens. I'm like, Ugh. Okay, <laughs> you know. well, What if they were like, rrr, rrr, back to you? I'd be like, okay, you are my people. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, rrr, rrr, back. <laughs> are you doing some producing now? I don't oh know yeah, you, you I did. talk about that? seat of my pants producing. I produced a movie called uh, I'll Be Next Door for Christmas. My friend David Willis, who wrote and directed it, I've known since Frasier, he has this great script called Renaissance Girl, and that's where it all started, and he wanted me to help him get the film made. And it's about a 20-something at the time, and so we've been I've been on it for so long that I've had to update the lists. Yeah. And, and oh, then yeah. there's other stuff, you know, it's just like there's, she's aged out, yeah, you know, like, you're, you know, like the young ingenue. So he talked about this other stuff, and I was like, well, if you're atta- you're wanting me to attach people to this or working, I should be a producer on it. And he was like, you should, you're right. That's absolutely true. And I was like, okay. We kind of, you know, I just kind of figured it out of what the first movie, I'll Be Next Up for Christmas, was very much like, oh, I've learned what not to do. You right. know, more than for me, David was great, and I think we produced a sweet little film. But it was like, oh, good lesson for me. So... Hopefully in the next one, that's what we're talking about, Renaissance Girl, I'll be, I can be more hands-on and figure it out. Like I was thinking, I think I always had my casting director hat on yeah. and I didn't take, I didn't put on a producer hat fully. Whereas there was some stuff that I was like, I should have thought about that differently. Are you but cast, I loved it. casting and producing this thing? I did, yeah, I did. I cast and produced, well, with other producers yeah. as well. Right. But I did cast the movie as well. So then are you like sending the selects to yourself and then commenting <laughs> on your own selects? <laughs> No, we were, I mean, everybody was in the room for the uh, for the sessions, yeah, and no. so it was all like, and I just kind of left it. There was a couple of times, like, there were, we were down to two people for one role, and David, the producer, really liked this other person, and I said, I, I t- one wholeheartedly disagree, and I'm, this is my producer's dance, and this is why, and he was like, got it, okay, mm-hmm. let's go with the other person. So hopefully the next one I'll be 
a little more hands on, a little more in the thick of it. It was just hard when we were doing. I think we were, it was pilot season, so oh, was, yeah. you know, so it was just hard to do it all. Anything else that you want to say or? No. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> I don't know, like make a dance or. Like... No, I'm behind the camera for a reason. Uh. <laughs> There's, no, I have like. The first time I taught a class, I was bright red the whole time because I was like speaking in front of people. Now I'm better about it, but I yeah. still don't love it. Well, you, you saw me at the Ardios and I was like, mm, <laughs> awkward person, just like holding my own, you know. Well, I appreciate you taking the time of to course. do this and my be on and talk to these people, talk to everyone. Angela, do you have any questions? No, she killed them all. All right, well, thank you. Thank you so much <laughs> for doing course, this. I appreciate it. And yay, we're done. Bye.